Development Advisory Committee. Oh, sorry, uh, Courtney, I'll start again. Uh, good morning, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Planning and Development Advisory Committee for November 9th. Uh, uh, I'm going to start with the uh, roll call and uh, start with Dan Kennedy. Present. Dennis O'Connor. Present. Steve Bassey. Present. Paul Cedro. Present. And I, John Sapulis, am present as well. Uh, in attendance is also our clerk, Courtney Hoyt Fox, our secretary treasurer, Lynn Banks, and county planning staff, Zach Prince and Joanna Salzberg. So there are two meetings tonight, one being in the Committee of Adjustment and the second being the Advisor Committee. There'll be nine minor variance applications uh, for consideration by the Committee of Adjustment. And there'll be two consents for the Advisory Committee to review and provide comments to the county. Please note that the meeting is video and audio recorded and all our product meetings are uploaded to municipalities YouTube page. By registering to participate in the meeting by electronic means, you're consenting to have your likeness and comments recorded and posted on YouTube. Okay, let's start with the next item, uh, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Lynn, did we receive any disclosures of pecuniary interest? No, we did not. Does anyone have any? Okay, thank you. Nope. Okay, uh, next item is the approval of minutes of October 12, 2021. Uh, do I have a mover and a seconder? Move. Moved by Dennis, second by Deep. Uh, all in favor, Dan? In favor. Dennis? In favor. Deep? In favor. Paul, and I'm in favor as well. In favor. So we're starting with the uh, minor uh, uh, variance applications. Um, so this applies to all of them. Uh, the purpose of these hearings is to inform and provide the public with the opportunity to ask questions or express views with respect to a minor variance application before us today. The township uh, requested you please notify the secretary treasurer of the committee by email at lbanks at pusslands.ca if you wish to be on record and like to be notified of future hearings and decisions regarding a specific application. The format of each hearing is as follows. Staff will present the information report specifically outlining the purpose of the application, summarizing compliance with the township notification submission requirements, and outlining staff comments, agency comments, and public comments of those who could not attend. The applicant or agent will then present the purpose and details of the application and any further relevant information. Following this, the public can obtain clarification, ask questions, or express their views on a proposal. You'll have a maximum 10 minutes to speak. Following this, the members of the committee can likewise obtain clarification and ask questions of the applicant. Then the item will be taken to the committee uh, for deliberation and uh, uh, rendering decision. The decision will be subject to a 20-day appeal period. Okay, so let's start with the first one, um, 6A, minor application D13MIL, Douglas Jamison Miller, 6812, concession two, front part lot 13, concession two, Township of Puslinch, requesting relief from new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23-2018 as amended from section 11.3 table, 11.2 agricultural zone, sta zone standards. The purpose and effect of application is to provide relief from Section 11.3, Table 11.2, to produce a permit a reduced lot frontage of the merged parcel to be 104 meters instead of 120 as required. Okay, uh, our staff, Lynn, would you please summarize the application, notification, submission requirements, outlining staff comments, recommendations, as well as those uh, of the public who could not attend. Certainly. Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met and the following comments were received from agencies and township staff. The GRCA had no objection to approval of the application. Township Fire Services said that the department has no concerns with the application. Please remind the applicant to ensure proper access is maintained for emergency vehicles to the building and to ensure any tree plantings around the driveway will not slow emergency response once the trees mature. Source water's comments where the application can be screened out and does not require a section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. 
and the Township's Public Works Department had no concerns at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, would like to call the applicant or the agent for the applicant. And uh, Courtney, would you please have the owner or the applicant join the panelist and present their application? Hello, I'm Jeff Biesman, uh, 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 agent for the uh, property owner. Thank you, Jeff. Would you please uh, present your application? So this is uh, the, a minor variance is, I mean, sorry, a severance has been approved for a lot line adjustment. Um, uh, a number of years ago, a parcel was created that you can see, uh, I'm gonna say what it says there, the severed parcel there with the little one in the front that was created a number of years ago. And, and now what we're doing is we're shrinking that previously approved severance to a much smaller one it's still 0.47 of a hectare. It's at the bottom left on the screen. The purpose of the minor variance is to deal with the frontage on the retained parcel, that it will be 104 meters instead of 120. You can see that big A on the, on the sketch there. In a way, I didn't know if this was really truly needed because the minor variance had been already approved for 64 meters on that, on that one parcel. Uh, so we're actually growing to 104, but anyways, the minor variance is it's very small and technical in nature. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Now we'll turn it over to the uh, public. Uh, Lynn, are there any registrants who have requested to speak? Uh, no, I don't believe there are any, Mr. Chair. Okay, Courtney, would you please uh, ask the attendees if there's anyone who wishes to, to speak on this item? Any of the attendees um, could you use your raise your hand feature if you'd like to make a question or comment. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, thank you very much. And now's the opportunity for the committee members to uh, ask questions of the uh, applicant, uh, Dan. No, I'm, I'm fine with this one. Dennis. I'm fine as well. Deep. I'm good, thank you. Paul? I'm good as well, thanks. And I do not have any questions as well. So uh, I'll read the document out and uh, we'll go around the table. You either approve uh, or deny or defer. Okay, the applicant made by Douglas Miller, Department of Municipal Ida 6812 Concession 2, Tasha Puslinch. Uh, Part or front part lot 13, concession two, part 161R-5548, part 161R-10560, Township Pustons, County of Wellington, the matter of section 45 of the Planning Act as amended, and the new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23-2018 as amended, and an application for minor variance request and relief from section 11.3, table 13 per 11.3 to permit a reduced lot frontage of the marriage parcel to be 104 meters instead of 120 meters as required. Okay, so again, it's either we uh, approve, deny, or defer. So I will start with you, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approve. Approved. Paul. Well, Approved. And I approve as well. Thank you. So uh, we'll move on to the uh, next item. Next item is 6B, minor variance application, D13, WU6580, Wellington Road, 34, front part, lot four, concession three, Tonshaw Pussons, request for relief from, of news comprehensive zoning bylaw 23-2018 as amended from section 11.3 table 11.2 agriculture zone standards. The purpose and effect of applications to provide relief from section 11.3 table 11.2 to permit a reduced lot frontage of the retained parcel to be 109 meters instead of 120 meters. Okay, we'll ask uh, uh, Lynn um, to 
summarize the application notification submission requirements and outlining staff agency comments and recommendations as well as public comments of those who could not attend. Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met and the following comments were received from agencies and township staff. The GRCA had no objection to the approval of the application. Source Water stated that the application can be screened out and does not require a Section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. The Township Public Works Department had no comments at this time, and the Township Fire Services Department had no concerns at this time. However, I did receive a comment, um, if you'd like me to read it out. Yes, I believe please. it's from someone within the 60 meter buffer that was circulated for the Land Division uh, Committee meeting for the severance application. Yes, so I'll read the email first. It references a letter that was sent to Land Division at County of Wellington. So the email said, to whom it may concern regarding 6580 Wellington Road 34, Inc., dear sir or madam, as per above, I, we again object to said severance, minor variance application D13WU. See previous email from Andrea Len Leonard Harnack. Also, a county culvert runs from south to north directly into said severance. Water would likely flow exiting the culvert east to the old Becker property, now John's property, then the water would flow north. Uh, to us, you have two water issues. And see previous email from Andrea and Leonard Harnack. Bending the rules to satisfy the above applicant does not seem very fair. I slash we again object to said severance, recurrent, and past objections. So the letter they're referencing was received by the Secretary Treasurer for the Wellington County Land Division Committee on June 15th, 2021. It says, Dear Sir or Madam, I, Andrea Harnack, am writing we the above to bring to your attention certain points that I slash we feel are relevant to said severance. My husband, Leonard Harnack, and his family farmed at the north abutting edge of said original property since 1947. Over the past 70 years, said property has been severely carved up since Delmer Chester owned it, parenthesis, left for Northern Ontario in 1969, close parenthesis. Norman Go Lightly farmed this land also for many years. As well, Dr. Cohen DDS had a horse barn and track on it as well. It does appear that severances in the township with houses bring in many tax dollars. Please keep in mind that was said above severance, another piece of good agricultural land may be gone. My husband's father and mother, with land's help, farmed land to the east of said severance and directly south, Old Chandler Farm and Steffler Farm. The current spring is a very dry one, and your map shows a slightly damp area to the immediate west of said property to be severed. Normally, water flows from the bush area to the southwest, i.e. Bill Miller property, under the road, County Road 34, through the land, the owners use a driveway on into the field to the east-northeast direction. Would this normal flow not affect the septic system in the rear of the property? We think so. Also, as I slash we also rented and farmed said land on the former property of Sophia Harnack, now owned by Bedarian. This land owned by Bedarian currently, I believe to be number one agricultural land, not number two, as you have specified in the severance sketch. I have had MPAC discussions with Adam, the local rep for MPAC, regarding yield of crop in primary land versus secondary land. He said, and I quote, yield depends on the grower's abilities, not a line in the sand slash field. In conclusion, I slash we object to said severance for the following reasons. Number one, water issues on normal rainfall years. And number two, open for discussion class two and versus class one agricultural land. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Lynn. Um, we'll now call the uh, applicant. Um, Courtney, would you please have the owner or the applicant join a panelist to present the application? Um, Jeff Buseman again, uh, representing the owner. Can... Thank you, Jeff. Please go ahead. So this uh, severance application, uh, you can see, is more at the bottom right of the parcel, 0.6 of a hectare. Um, the severance has been approved by the Land Division Committee subject to conditions. In this case, uh, the frontage on the retained parcel is at 109 meters. The minimum is 120. So in this case, we need a minor variance to allow for 109 instead. Um, again, the minor variance is pretty straightforward. We see many of these and very similar to the application we just dealt with. Um, are there any questions or comments? Okay, thank you very much. Now it's a public opportunity. 
Lynn, are there any registrants who have requested to speak? Um, I have not received any requests. Okay, uh, Courtney, would you please uh, canvas the audience, see if there's anybody who would like to speak? Anyone in the attendee section uh, would like to make a comment? If you could just please use the raise your hand feature now. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, thank you very much. So let's turn it over to the um, committee um, members. Does, uh, let's start with uh, Dan. Um, Jeff, I apologize. I wasn't able to get by this property after the letter came out. Could, could you maybe explain a bit about what they're talking about with the water issues in this? I, I really don't know the details of the water issues there. Um, down at the, I know at the left of the, um, on the retained lands, there is a bit of a pond and there's a culvert underneath the driveway there, right. but I didn't see really any significant, I don't recall seeing any significant culvert in front of the subject property. Uh, okay. If I'm not mistaken, the land rises from the road, so I don't, I didn't really see any drainage issues at all, not that I analyzed it super critically. Okay, that's it for me. Okay, thank you. So let's go to Dennis. Yeah, maybe Zach, uh, this raises the issue on uh, class uh, one and two land. Uh, basically, that has nothing to do with who's farming it. That's the soil type, soil classification. Is that not correct on that one? Yeah, through, through the chair. Yeah, it's not so much about uh, yeah. uh, yields and that sort of thing. It's soil types. And there's a, there's a number of different factors, but yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, and the drainage, I, I kind of agree there that it's, it didn't seem to be a major issue there. So, okay, that's up for me, thanks. Deep. Do you have any comments from the GRC regarding floodplains or anything? I guess through the chair, uh, it's, not, it's not in the floodplain. It's not in the floodplain? Okay, thank you. Okay, and Paul? Uh, I'm good with this, thank you. Okay, and uh, I'm good as well. So um, let's uh, uh, get on with the actual wording. Uh, application made by 6580 Wellington Road, Inc., care of Jane Wu. Uh, 6580 Wellington Road 34, Township Pusslinch, Concession 3, Front part lot four, Tasha Pussons County, Wellington, and matter section 45 of Planning Act as amended, and new Pumpa Hamza Zoning Bylaw 23 2018 as amended, and an application for minor variance requesting relief to permit a reduced lot frontage of the retained parcel to be 109 instead of 129, 120 uh, meters. So again, it's either uh, we approve, deny, or defer. So let's go around the table. Dan? Approve. Dennis? Approved. Deep. Approved. Paul. Approved. And I approve as well, and it's subject to a 20 day appeal period. Okay, let's move on to the uh, next one. 6C. Minor application D13 SPE, Corey William Spears, 11 Farham Road, Lot 2, Part Lot 3. Plan 131, Township of Pusslinch, requesting relief of new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23-2018 as amended from section 11.4, table 11.3, agriculture zone standards and section 4.16.1, MDS1, new non-farm uses. The purpose and effect is to provide relief from one, 11.4, uh, table 11.3 to permit a reduced lot frontage of the seven parcel to be 11 meters instead of 25 as re meters as, as required. Section 4.16.1 to permit a minimum distance separation type one setback on the seven parcel of the gardens at 413 Arco Road to be 370 meters instead of 976 meters as required. Okay, let's. Uh, ask um, Lynn to summarize the application notification submission requirements, outlining staff, agency comments and recommendations, as well as public comments of those who could not attend. 
Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met and the following comments were received from agencies and township departments. The GRCA had no objection to the approval of the application. The Township Fire Services Department stated that the department has no concerns with the application except to ensure that the driveway is accessible for emergency vehicles, including ensuring new trees when mature will not overhang the driveway or removing any existing tree limbs overhanging the driveway. Public, the Township Public Works Department had no concerns at this time. And um, source water uh, comments were since this property is located in a vulnerable area, but the activities as indicated would not create a significant drinking water threat. The application be, can be screened out and it does not require section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. Uh, Mr. Chair, we also received communication from one of the landowners within the 60 meter buffer. Um, and I do know she is in attendance tonight at the meeting. If, so I don't know if you'd like me to read her letter or just have her address the committee when the time comes. Well, uh, I, I would suggest you read it and uh, she may fill in uh, any more details that's not in, covered in the letter. Certainly. Attention Secretary Treasurer, I am Peter Robinson and I live with my partner, Allison McNeil at 19 Farnham Road, adjacent to the subject property of this application. Allison took part in the June 2021 County of Wellington Land Division Committee meeting that resulted in the approval of severance B17-21 subject to conditions. At that time, we were told that our concerns would be better dealt with at the township level. The proposed laneway to the severed parcel will run for 80 meters adjacent to our southeast property line before it widens out to the proposed building site. Given that it will be less than 30 meters from our house, we feel that this laneway may, excuse me, may be the most significant impact on our enjoyment of our property as the newly severed parcel next door is developed and afterwards. We are getting used to the fact that our relative relatively private backyard will be less so. We are not arguing the planning merits of the minor variance, but we would like the township's assistance in ensuring that the screening takes place, regardless of future ownership of the properties next to us. We don't believe it's possible to totally screen this development from our view, but we would appreciate effective landscaping and plantings as opposed to a private fencing. We would ask that since the laneway will have to be constructed before the lot can be developed, all landscaping and screening along the laneway where it faces our property take place before the lane is used by construction traffic for the proposed house. We understand that another condition of the severance was to obtain an entrance permit from the township for the connection of the laneway to Farnham Road. We can't find any reference to this in the reviews by circulated agencies. We would like assurance that the permit specifies that a culvert will be placed under the laneway at the road allowance for Farnham Road to prevent ponding at the southwest corner of our property. By this letter, we would like to gently suggest that there are impacts that our neighbors hadn't thought of from our side of the fence, but that can be addressed with neighborly cooperation. We will continue planting trees on our property and look forward to working with the Spears as they further develop their property. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant join the panelists to present their application? I'm <clears throat> Jeff Biesman again. Uh, okay. from the, thank you, the Jeff. Please go ahead. Agent. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. So this uh, severance is uh, for a flag-shaped lot um, where the uh, facing it from Farnham Road, the narrow portion of the lot is 11 meters wide. Um, and then it opens out to a bigger area in the back behind the existing house. Uh, the Spears are planning to build a new house in the back and, and then the, the hope is that their, their, their parents, one of the parents will live in the house in the front. The, uh, there's quite a few trees. It's, it's, uh, you can see the bush symbol on, this, on the sketch representing trees. The idea is that the new driveway will go between sort of sets two rows of trees there and feed into the um, uh, parcel open area in the back. Um, we're here for two minor variances. One is for the frontage of the severed parcel. You can see the A on the there, that's 11 meters uh, instead of a minimum of, I think it's 25. Um, and then the other minor variance is for the distance to the barn across Arco Road. That's uh, the university, I'm sure more familiar with it, Agricultural Research Station. There's quite a few barns and buildings on that property. Uh, as a result of having so many barns and so on, the MDS number went really high because you you factor in all the barns on the property, even though 
their the other barns are much further away. So the variance is to the barn that's the closest and that's 370 meters we're asking for, which is still a long ways. Um, if <clears throat> the planning staff report uh, has been included and is positive and supports the application, when you look at the um, last attachment or attachment number one to the planning staff report, find that interesting, that report, because it shows the 976 meter circle and the, I'm going to say hundreds of homes that are in that circle on that air photo already. So um, uh, it's, it's, just a, it's just a weird situation, that high, high number. So the minor variance I'd say for the, for, the, uh, for the barn is very minor in nature. And same with the frontage, the front, uh, there's plenty of room to have the, a lot of this nature. And we've seen more lots of this type before. And again, to reiterate, planning staff has written a report for the township. I'm assuming all, uh, the committee members have this report and, and provide the opinion that the four tests have been met. Um, in terms of the comments written already, there will be an entrance permit uh, required. And that will, that's usually just to deal, ensure that there's a safe entrance at the front. Eventually an entrance will be constructed and will be built according to uh, township standards. What kind of culvert, how big the culvert, that kind of thing will be uh, reviewed and approved by township staff. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or any comments that people may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Now I'll turn it over to the public. Uh, Lynn, are there any registrants who requested to speak? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we have Allison McNeil has requested to speak. Okay, um, Courtney, would you please unmute uh, this uh, individual and uh, bring him into the panel? Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Um, would you please state your uh, names, please? So I'm Allison McNeil, the property owner, and this is Peter Robinson, my partner who lives with me in my in our home. Good, great. And thank you. So um, I'll ask you to present your uh, questions and uh, if there's any clarification, uh, I'll uh, direct them to the appropriate uh, people and I'll give you uh, 10 minutes to speak and um, let's start now, please do. I, I think you've you've heard our letter and our concerns are fairly minor uh, with respect though, as far as screening as shown on the sketch by, by the surveyor, um, most of the trees, if you came and had a site visit, you'd see that there isn't a lot of existing screening. There's a few existing trees, but in, in putting the roadway in, um, we'd like to see some screening put in on, on the sides of the laneway, because that will be there while the construction is happening and long after the house is built. And our, what I'd said to our neighbors is we'd appreciate it if the screening and landscaping got done when the road's built and before the house has started to, to be constructed. Um, this laneway is, I mean, as we said in the letter, we're getting used to the idea of not having as much privacy, but that laneway is about 75 feet from our house and windows on that side of the house. Um, so I don't think it's too much to ask. I'm just not sure of the mechanism for helping us get these um, these concerns taken care of. Um, obviously, this isn't a site plan type of issue. Um, and my concern about the culvert is that, that there's a low spot um, at the corner of our property just beside where their entrance will be. And um, I'd, I'd just like to know that it's going to be done properly. Uh, no concerns about that. The other overriding concern is we have no trouble dealing with our neighbors right now. But once this severance is complete, uh, there's a parcel of land that could be sold the next day. And um, we feel that our best chance of cooperating with our neighbors is the ones that are there now. Um, because if the property was sold, um, we're, we're starting all over again. And there's no real leverage for us other than goodwill. Um, to work with the next owners if that was to happen. Circumstances change. The Spears may have to change their plans too. 
Um, we'll recognize that. We just want some protection for us. Allison's been living there since 1995. 1990. <laughs> Anyhow, mm -hmm. um, I think that covers our concerns. Do you have any questions for us? Okay, uh, let's go around the table. Uh, uh, Dan, do you have any questions of the applicant or the, um, the next door neighbors? No, I don't. And I hope they can work things out with their neighbors. That's just a comment. Hey, okay, Dennis. Um, yeah, the only concern here is uh, we're just adding one more uh, parcel close to these. Oh, sorry, Den sorry, sorry, Dennis. We're just asking the uh, the uh, uh, questions of these individuals. Right okay. Now. No, I'm good. I'm good with that. Then. Yeah. Thanks. Fair enough. Uh, Deep. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Paul. I'm good. Thanks for your comments. Okay. Thank you very much for your comments, and uh, we'll uh, see if there's any other people who wish to speak. Um, Courtney, would you please canvas the rest of the audience to see if they have any uh, questions or comments to make? Uh, if anyone in the attendee section has any questions or comments, if you could just use the raise your hand feature now. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, let's go around the table uh, uh, to the committee members and uh, if you have any questions of staff or the uh, county planner or um, uh, any comments to make, please do. So we'll start with uh, Dan Kennedy. No, I'm, I'm fine with this. Okay, Dennis, Connor. Yeah, just because this is the Agriculture Re Research Center, it affects all of Ontario farmers. So I guess what's the protection to, because it is research, these barns are probably more likely to be modified. Um, what, what's, maybe Zach can answer this, what the procedure will be if they have to do an MSD2, um, do they got to get a minor variance or how is that going to be handled? Yep, through the chair. Uh, if they did modify any barns or or say they wanted to build a new barn, they would have to go through the MDS2 process. And depending on where that barn is located on the property, it is quite a large property, then they would maybe need relief, but it maybe wouldn't be relief from this lot. There's a number of other um, factors in the area too. There's a church, there's a cemetery, um, a number of homes in the area as well too. But a lot of those come in after the property was already being run for research, right? I guess my concern, Zach, is you take an existing building, you're not going to put a new one, you're not going to move a whole building, and everybody's got to contribute to this research, you would most likely want to, to modify a building that's already there. So what, what avenue do they have? Well, I guess uh, through the chair, that would be... Um... If they're just modifying an existing building, and are, are you thinking that if they added more uh, livestock to an existing building, like say they turned one of the barns into a poultry barn and that made a worse situation than what's there? No, most likely what it'll be, Zach, is new housing. So it's a, it's it's got poultry and, and now they're putting cages in versus non-cages or a new type of cage. That technically would require a building permit, but not really a change of use. So we wouldn't want to, have to say, okay, now we're going to build a building 900 meters away to meet MDS one or two, pardon me, they should be able to modify that building. So I just want to know what, if, if we get asked what their proceed, they should be able to, to modify that building and keep the existing footprint. It, yeah, through the, through the chair, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, that's a, but I, I know that the MBS one calculations are quite a bit different than MBS two. Definitely yep. the um, calculations are there to protect the farmer. So, uh, when a farmer is looking to expand a barn, the, the amount, the setback is quite a bit less. So I'm not exactly sure um, uh, what, what would happen in that scenario, but uh, definitely the MDS2 calculation is uh, much less than the MDS1. Okay. okay. Thanks. Very deep. I'm good with this. Thank you. Okay, Paul. Uh, I did. I did want to. Uh, I guess with regards to the comments, the neighbor, like I did drive by there, so I guess it's a question: Is there 
Um, do we have a mechanism on our end to implement some sort of, you know, screening or, you know, some sort of um, protection for them from that respect? Or is that not in our, within our scope? Because, you know, I think what kind of makes some sense to me when I drove past there, like the house is pretty close and there's going to be a laneway right, right there. No doubt about it. Okay, uh, I'm going to suggest that uh, I ask our uh, clerk if she can comment on this point and also the other point, the uh, um, the culvert. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, just with respect to the culvert, so um, as the applicant uh, or the agent, sorry, has already alluded to, we do have a condition in the normal condition in our consents that they are subject to uh, an entrance permit. So again, if there's a culvert required and the size of that culvert that will be dealt with um, through the entrance permit process and established by our public works department. Um, so that is something that, um, although it doesn't specifically say there's a culvert required in the consent condition, it is something that's addressed through that permit process. And then with respect to the screenings, um, so there's, there's nothing in the zoning bylaw that um, specifically requires an agricultural property with a residential use on it um, for a laneway to include screenings. Um, it's, our bylaw talks a little bit about screenings um, for non-residential properties or outside storage, things like that, but not specifically to a laneway. So the zoning bylaw doesn't, um, doesn't speak to screenings on a residential lot with respect to a laneway. So it may be outside of the scope of this application, given that this is for frontage, uh, reduced frontage. Okay. Any other questions, Paul? Uh, no, thanks. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions uh, other than I'll ask staff when this uh, uh, comes forward to the uh, building department. Um, could they consider uh, the put the letter in the file as part of the uh, building application? And uh, sorry, as as part of the uh, in the file for the uh, when the people come to apply for the building permit. So at least there's a record that there's some uh, concerns with the area with the neighbors with respect to the. Uh, landscaping and the uh, drainage. Okay, so let's uh, move to the actual wording. Corey Spears, 11 Farham Road, Township Pusslinch, all of Lot 2, part of Lot 3, Part 131, Township Pusslinch, County of Wellington. In the matter of Section 45 of the Planning Act, as amended, a new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23 2018 as amended, and an application for a minor variance request and relief from 1 Section 11.4, Table 11 3, to permit a reduced lot frontage of the severed parcel to be 11 meters instead of 25 meters as required, 2 to permit a reduced MDS 1 setback from the severed parcel to the barns at 413 Arco World to be 307 meters instead of 976 meters as required. So uh, it's, uh, again, it's either we approve, deny, or defer. So let's start with uh, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approve. Deep. Deep. Muted Deep. You're muted Deep. Approved. Paul. Approved. And I approve it as well. And again, it's subject to a 20 day appeal period. Okay, let's move on to um, item D. Okay, uh, item D, minor application, uh, D13-SLO, John Sloot, 985 Watson Road South, Rear Park, Lot 10, Concession 9, Township Pussons, Request and Lease on New Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 23-2018 as amended from Section 11.3, Table 11.2, Agriculture Zone Standards and Section 4.16.1, MDS-1, New Non-Farm Uses. The purpose and effect of the application is to provide relief from section 11.3 table 11.2 to permit a reduced lot frontage of the retained parcel to be 37 meters instead of 120 meters as required. And two, section 
4.11, sorry, 4.16.1 to permit a minimum distance separation type one setback from the severed parcel to the barns at 4726 Watson Road South to be 291 meters instead of 392 meters as required. Okay, we'll turn it over to uh, Lynn. Would you please summarize the application, notification, submission requirements, outlining staff and agency comments and recommendations, and public comments from uh, of those who could not attend? Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met, and the following comments were received from agencies and from township departments. GRCA has no objection to approval of the application. Townships Fire Services Department said the department has no concerns with the application, except to ensure that the driveway is accessible for emergency vehicles, including removing any tree limbs overhanging the driveway. Uh, source water protection has said, since this property is located in a vulnerable area, but the activities as indicated would not create a significant drinking water threat, the application can be screened out, does not require a section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. The township's public works department had no concerns at this time. We also had comments from Grand Junction Railway said, and they said on the proposed minor variance, Grand Junction Railway is in favor, providing the owner agrees to the reduced frontage of the lot being within 1,400 feet of the Guelph Junction Railway Limited. Although this is a safe distance from the railway, sounds may be emitted from the operation of which Grand Junction Railway nor its operator has any control over. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant join a panelist to present the application? Jeff Buseman, uh, agent. Okay, great. Okay. Jeff, uh, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair, committee members. So, um, this application went through a lot of work prior to going to the land division committee, primarily for focused on the environmental impact or potential impact of that uh, of this severance. So the severance is uh, uh, at the front there or the top of the piece of paper. You can see it's a little odd shaped. The reason for the odd shaped a little bit on the diagonal part is so that we're the adequate distance away from the wetland feature. Um, also, it's been set up so that the building envelope will be also uh, quite a distance away from the small wetland feature in the front. So there's a building area envelope area of 0.4 of a hectare where the house will go. So the Senate Land Division Committee did approve the severance, subject to conditions, of course. And in this case, we need two minor variances. One is for uh, the frontage of the retained parcel. Uh, you can see the retained parcel is 6.7 hectares. For any parcel less than four hectares, the minimum frontage is 25 meters. Anywhere from four hectares and up, you're usually applying really large ones, the minimum is 120 meters. So in this case, we're asking for 37 meters. In this case, it's plenty of room for to access the house that's further set back. So it's a very reasonable um, uh, request. The other variance requests are for the barns located to the south or to the right on the piece of paper. And uh, you can see the distances there that, uh, that are being requested. Um, just to take a note, uh, it, I've done a lot of MBS calculations over time and the MBS calculations have a type A or a type B scenario. Type B is when, uh, when it uh, basically there's more residences in the area and the minimum number is actually double compared to type A. And so in this case, we've got a type B, so they tend to be high numbers. So um, all the variances are reasonable in light of the barn uh, that's there. Um, the, and, and one thing to note too, that the, um, that the distance from the severance is actually further than the closest house. I know there was a question about MDS2 a minute, a few minutes ago about the uh, how to how applies the MDS2. MDS2 is for the expansion of a barn and that's it, it, usually that's set up for adding animals and they the, the calculation goes by the closest houses nearby. So in this case we already have one house, house number 985, which is closer than the barn. So uh, it would be in, uh, uh, impacted more by by that already existing barn, any house on the severed lot wouldn't have any impact on the barns that are on the retained parcel. I mean, on the parcel to the south. So again, I think it's fairly straightforward. Again, planning staff have written a report 
uh, supportive and consider the uh, four tests to be for minor variants to be met. So if there's any questions or comments, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Lynn, are there any registrants who have requested to speak? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, I did not receive any requests. Uh, Courtney, would you please canvas the audience to see if there's any uh, member of the public who wish to uh, address the committee? If there's any attendees uh, wishing to make a comment, if you could use the raise your hand feature now. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, very good. So let's go around the table. Um, let's start with you, Dan. Do you have any questions or comments you wish to make? No, I'm fine with this. Uh, Dennis? I'm fine as well. Okay, Deep? Jeff, just a question. Uh, safe entrance is possible, I'm assuming? Yes. Yes, the safe entrance is possible. Okay, thank you. Paul? I'm good, thank you. And I'm fine as well, so let's uh, read the document. Application made by John Sloot, Municipal Address 985 Watson Road South, Township of Pistons, Rear Part Lot 10, Concession 9, Part 1 on 61R6390, Township of Pistons, County of Wellington, a matter of Section 45 of Planning Act as amended and new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23 2018 as amended the application for minor variants. Requesting relief to permit one, a reduced lot frontage of the retained parcel to be 37 meters instead of 120 meters as required. Two, to permit a reduced MDS1 setback from the separate parcel for barns at 4726 Watson Road South to be 291 meters instead of 392 meters as required. Again, so we all approve, deny, or defer. So let's go around the table. Dan? Approve. Uh, Dennis? Approved. Deep? Approved. Paul? Approved. And I approve as well, and it's subject to a 20-day appeal period. Okay, let's move on to item E. Six E, minor application D13, Ham, William Harvey Hamilton, and Lisa Ann Hamilton, 4674 Watson Road South, Rear Part Lot 13, Concession 9, Town of Pushton, requesting relief and new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23 2018 as amended from Section 4.16.1 MDS 1, new non farm uses. The purpose and effect of the application is to provide relief from Section 4.16.1 to permit a minimum distance separation type 1 setback from the barn at 4. 4 at 4677 Watson Road South to the severed parcel to be 174 meters instead of 220 meters as required. Caitlin, would you please uh, uh, summarize the application, some notification submission requirements, outlining staff and agency comments, recommendations, as well as public comments of those who could not attend. Notice of the application was given in accordance with the with the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met, and the following comments were received from agencies and township departments. The GRCA has no objection to the approval of the application. The township Fire Services Department said the department has no concerns with the application, except to ensure that the driveway is accessible for emergency vehicles, including ensuring any new trees when mature will not overhang the driveway or by removing any existing tree limbs overhanging the driveway. Public Works had no concerns at this time. Source Water Protection said since this property is located in a vulnerable area, but the activities as indicated would not create a significant drinking water threat, the application can be screened out and does not require a Section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. And the Grand Junction Railway's comment was, on the proposed minor variance, Grand Junction Railway is in favor of providing the owner agrees to providing sale warning clause of the lot being within 1,500 feet of the Guelph Junction Railway Limited. Although this is safe distance from the railway, sounds may be emanated from the operation in which Grand Junction Railway Limited nor its operator has any control over. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant join the panelists to present the application? Jeff Biesman again, agent. Thank you, Jeff. Would you please go ahead? 
So this uh, application, uh, there was actually uh, two applications that happened here. Uh, both were approved, have been approved by Land Division Committee. So one is a severed parcel between, uh, you can see a parcel that was uh, previously severed that's on the right on the piece of paper. And the other severance is a little harder to see. Uh, it's, a, it's a bigger property. Uh, it's almost like two large pieces, one at the front, one at the back. So the one at the front, <clears throat> what we're doing is, is uh, taking the majority of the land of the parcel on the front and adding it to the back parcel so that the retained, what we show there is retained parcel two is the existing house and buildings that are there now. So um, and the end result will be sort of three rural residential parcels in a row um, where you can see retained parcel two, severed parcel one, and then one uh, parcel that was there previously, number 4662. So the minor variance here is for the MBS to the barn across the road. Um, those distances to the barns are kind of squeezed in there. They're not all drawn to scale. So it's set back, uh, the barn set back a little further than suggested a little bit by graphically. But when you look at the numbers, you can see that, <coughs> um, uh, so that it's 174 meters to the proposed severance. Now that's also ironically the same distance to the house that's on the re on the uh, retained parcel two. You can see to the house to the left there, we've got a distance of 175. And you can see on the right, we have a distance of 144. So similar to what I mentioned previously, the barn is not, uh, if the barn wants to expand, it's it's uh, uh, expanding criteria will be the closest house. And for sure, uh, those three houses will end up being closer than the house that ends up on severed parcel number one. So um, again, it's a, a, I think a pretty straightforward uh, uh, minor variance and um, planning staff are, have written a report that is in support of the uh, variance. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Lynn, are there any registrants who have uh, requested to speak? No, Mr. Chair, I did not receive any requests. Courtney, would you please uh, uh, canvas the attendees uh, to see if there are any member of the public would like to uh, speak? There's any attendees looking to make a comment? If you can please use the raise your hand feature now. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, so let's turn it over to the committee members. Uh, Dan, any questions or comments? No, no questions, I'm fine with this. Okay, thank you, Dennis. I'm fine as well. Okay, Deep. No questions. Paul? I'm fine, thanks. And I'm fine as well. So we'll read the actual document. Application made by William and Lisa Hamilton, 4674 Watson Road South, Township of Pustlinch, Weir Park Lot 13, Concession 9, Township of Pustlinch, County of Wellington, a matter of Section 45 of the Planning Act as amended, a new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23 2018 as amended, and an application for a minor variance requesting relief to permit a reduced lot MDS one setback from the barn at 4677 Watson Road South to the suburb parcel to be 174 meters instead of 220 meters as required. And again, it's either approved, deny, or defer. So we'll start with you, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approved. Deep. Approved. Paul. Approved. And I approve as well, and it's subject to a 20-day appeal period. Fair enough. So now we move to 6F. Minor application B13 JHA Kamal Paul Jahaj 7004 concession four, part lot four, concession 20, concession 4S, Township of Puslinch, requesting relief for new comprehensive zoning bar 23 2018 as amended from section 4.16 MDS1, new non, new non farm uses. The purpose and, uh, and effect of the application to provide relief from section 
4.16 to permit a minimum distance separation type one setback from the barn at 4638 side of the 20 north to a separate parcel to be 320 meters instead of 420 meters as required. Okay, Lynn, uh, turn it over to you. Would you please summarize the application, notification, submission requirements, outlining staff, agency comments, and recommendations, as well as uh, public comments for those who cannot attend? Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met, and the following comments were received from agencies and township departments. GRCA has no objection to the approval of the application. The Township Fire Services Department has stated that they have no concerns with the application. Uh, Source Water Protection states that they can confirm the property is located in a WHPA-D 25-year time of travel, and therefore the application can be screened out and no notice is required pursuant to the Clean Water Act. And the Township's Public Works Department has no concerns at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant, you a panelist to present their application? Jeff Biesman here again. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, Jeff, please start. So this is a severance that's been approved again by the Land Division Committee for a parcel, a new parcel on the front right there. Um, and the reason why we're here is to deal with the distance, my, uh, distance to the barn to the north. Um, uh, we've got, a, a, what do I want to call it, a, a, an array of arrows coming from the barn. What we wanted to show here on this sketch was the distances to a number of dwellings that are, uh, that are related to the barn and to show how it all, how close, uh, how many homes are already close in this area. So in our case, we're asking for uh, a minor variance to allow 320 meters to this barn instead of 422. Uh, <clears throat> one of the guidelines in MDS says when there are four or more houses closer to the uh, parcel, then you go to the fourth. The fourth closest house shall be the minimum MDS. In this case, we have two that are closer, maybe even three. Um, so there's, there's lots of houses already. There's a number already closer. Um, Again, the comment about MDS2 is uh, if, if the barn was ever to be expanded, it'd be, it'd be limited or restricted first by a number of the other houses that are already closer to, the, to, this, ever, uh, to this barn. I'd be, again, the planning staff have written a report that's positive and supportive and says that this variance meets the four tests. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lynn, are there any registrants who've uh, requested to speak? Uh, no, Mr. Chair did not receive any requests. Okay, uh, Courtney, would you please uh, canvas the uh, audience to see if there's any uh, member of the public who wishes to uh, address the committee? If there's any attendees looking to make a comment, if you could please use the raise your hand feature now. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's turn it over to the committee members. So we'll start with you, Dan. Uh, no questions. Okay, uh, uh, Dennis. Yeah, just uh, this is a poultry barn, open manure pile. Uh, we get rain on it, we're creating ammonia. So we have a, a, a aromatic uh, hazard, let's call it. Similar to the Guelph Junction saying, they want to make sure everybody's aware that there's going to be noise from the railway. Should we, is there, is there a method for us to make sure that that's attached to the lot that who's ever buying this, maybe the second guy down the road realizes they're buying a building that's going to be subject to agricultural smells. Okay. Uh, I'll turn it over to you, Courtney, to see if you can uh, answer this question. Sorry, Mr. Chair, could that question just be repeated? Basically what I'm saying, can we put some sort of a acknowledgement or whatever onto this lot so that the, any future owners have to know that similar to what the Guelph Junction Railway is saying, you're gonna be within so many, such a distance of a operating railway and it's gonna be noisy. Uh, you're gonna be 322 meters to a poultry barn that 
at certain times of the year with a good and rainy weather is going to smell? So um, in terms of typically the way that it's communicated from one owner to the next is through registering that like information on title, but the land registry office and um, Ms. Banks may be able to speak to this further. It's quite specific and restrictive about what can be placed um, registered on title in that way. So I, I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know if that is something that could be made new owners could be made aware of before they purchase it. It's certainly something um, that if it's within a planning application that could be uh, communicated if a new owner ever did a, a compliance letter search through the township to find some information on the property before they purchase it. But in terms of having it legally registered or anything like that, I don't think it's possible. But like I said, Ms. Banks may be able to comment further. Yes, Mr. Chair, I can speak a little more to that if you'd like. Um, the registry office, I strongly agree with Ms. White Fox, will not permit something like that to be registered on title. If it was, as she said, a planning application such as subdivision agreement, you could have a clause in the agreement stating that you would have that the owner would be required in all agreements of purchase and sale to put um, that statement in the agreement of purchase and sale so the owner is aware of it. Um, as Ms. White Fox also mentioned, if they do a compliance request, they can see it that way. But really, they just have to rely on due diligence, maybe visiting the property a few times. But I don't think we can make that as a condition. And we would not be able to register that on title. The registry office would kick it back and cancel the registration. OK. I was just looking at a way to avoid us being into a situation where there is a complaint. And if we have them acknowledge they knew it was going to be there down the road. We've now reduced the distance separation. So I think we go up high on the list when there's a, a complaint of, on normal agricultural practices. But that's just a comment. Okay. I'm good. You. Okay, Deep. I'm good. Thank you. Paul? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I guess I'd like to follow up, Courtney. Uh, is there a mechanism? inside the office that, uh, for instance, uh, that can be uh, alerted? I know you mentioned the fact that if somebody does the, a search, they are made aware of this through uh, uh, asking for uh, particular details. Is there anything that can be done other than um, uh, trying to reg register with the land res registry? Uh, something internally can be done to uh, address what Dennis is suggesting? So we do have the ability in our um, property management uh, software to add notes to uh, roles and, and properties in that way, um, where we could we could add a note to it to take a look at this, this planning application. Um, again, when we receive complaints um, about existing agricultural uses, um, it does trigger staff to look at further what's going on and, and take a look at what's been approved and what's gone on on neighboring lots. So um, it, it would be discovered and identified through that process, but we can certainly look at adding something internally to um, the through our property management uh, software that we have. It, it's Mr. Chair, it's not formal. It's something that could trigger staff, but it, it could be tracked in that way. Okay, that, that sounds uh, like a, 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 something that can be done at least at a township level uh, to address uh, Dennis's concern. Okay, that's all the questions I had. So um, let's uh, get into the actual wording. Okay, uh, application made by Kamamar Paul Jahaj, 7004 Concession Road. Four, Township of Pustlinch, Part Lot 20, Concession 4, Township of Pustlinch, and a matter of Section 45 of the Planning Act as amended, a new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23 2018 as amended, and an application for a minor grants to permit a reduced MDS 1 setback from the barn at 4638 Side Road 20 North of the separate parcel to be 320 meters instead of 422 meters as required. Again, it's either approved, deny, or defer. So we'll start with you, Dan. Approved. Dennis? Approved. Deep? Approved. Paul? Approved. And I approve as well, and then it's subject to a 20-day appeal period. 
Okay, so let's uh, move to uh, 6G. Minor variance application D13, GRE, Devinder Singh Grewal and Sukhir Bir Kaur Grinwal, 130 Multi Road West, rear part lot 16, concession 7, Township Postage, request relief of New Company and Zoning Bylaw 23 2018, as amended from Section 11.3, Table 11.2, Agricultural Zone Standards. The purpose and effect of the application is to provide relief from one. Section 11.3, Table 11.2, to permit a reduced lot functions on the of the retained parcel to be 94 meters instead of 120 meters as required. Okay, then we'll turn it over to you again. Would you please summarize the application notification requirements, uh, submission requirements, outlining staff and agency comments and, rec and recommendation, as well as public comments from those who could not attend. Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met and the following comments were received from agencies and township departments. The GRCA has no objection to the approval of the application. Uh, the fire, Townships Fire Services Department said that the department has no concerns with the application except to ensure that the driveway is accessible for emergency vehicles, including ensuring any new trees when mature will not overhang the driveway or removing any existing tree limbs overhanging the driveway. Uh, Source Water said that this property is not located in a vulnerable area. The application can be screened out, does not require Section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. Also, it should be noted that the comments from Public Works that was listed in the agenda was for Spears and not this application. Um, but our, the Township's Public Works Department has said, Please have the City of Guelph issue an entrance approval as they are the body of authority for this stretch of Malpy Road. I also received a letter from the City of Guelph regarding the application that I can read out. And the letter says, thank you for circulating the above reference application to the City for review and comment. These lands were subject to consent application B5321 to the County of Wellington Planning and Land Division Committee. The consent proposed to create a 0 0.73 hectare lot with frontage on Malpy Road West from an existing 9.62 hectare parcel for residential purposes with a private well and septic system. In comments to the County of Wellington Planning and Land Division Committee, the city recommended that the severance not be approved because it does not conform to the applicable policies of the county's official plan, and it is inconsistent with Provincial Policy Statement Policy 1.1.1D. The current application is to permit a reduced lot frontage of 94 meters for the retained parcel of consent application B5321, whereas the zoning bylaw requires a minimum lot frontage of 120 meters for property zoned agricultural. As the current minor variance application is required to facilitate the severance, the same policies are applicable. The subject property is adjacent to the city's municipal boundary and is therefore subject to urban area protection policies of the County of Wellington official plan. The County of Wellington official plan establishes a one kilometer urban protection area within which development, including the creation of new lots, is discouraged. Um, they do add uh, 4.7.1 distinct urban rural boundary. Uh, states said in order to allow the efficient expansion of urban areas and to maintain a clear distinction between urban and rural areas, the County of Wellington A prohibits new development adjacent to existing urban centers or hamlets unless part of an urban expansion uh, print, open parenthesis, adjacent will normally mean within one kilometer of an urban area boundary, close parenthesis, and B, prohibits intensive livestock operations adjacent to existing urban boundaries in accordance with the minimum distance separation formula. This policy does not apply to prevent the completion of previously approved development, logical infilling, or development of a minor nature, which does not impede the efficient expansion of the urban area. Additionally, the expansion of existing developments may be considered if the overall intent of the section is met. The proposed development would fragment the parcels, creating a land use pattern that is less suitable for urban expansion. The subject property is located in the secondary agricultural area and core Greenland's designation of the county's official plan section 10.4.4 contemplates the creation of new residential lots in the secondary agricultural area, provided that, among other matters, the lot is well removed from any settlement area boundary. The proposed severance is in proximity to the Guelph settlement area boundary and does not conform with policy 10.4.4F of the official plan. 
The proposed severance does not conform with applicable policies in the Wellington County official plan, specifically policy 4.7.1, as it does not constitute previously approved development or logical infilling, and policy 10.4.4F, well, as it is not well removed from any settlement area boundary. Section 1.1.1D of the Provincial Policy Statement 2020 addresses avoiding development and land use patterns that would prevent the efficient expansion of settlement areas in those areas which are adjacent or close to settlement areas. The proposed severance is inconsistent with PPS Policy 1.1.1D. Their recommendation is, in considering the foregoing, the city recommends that the minor variance not be approved as it does not maintain the general intent and purpose of the applicable official plan. It is not considered desirable for the development of the land, and the city requests to be notified of the committee's decision on this matter. And that's all the comments. Thank you. Uh, uh, Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant join a panelist to present her application? Yes, um, Jeff Buseman again. Hey, Jeff, you got the table. Thank you. Um, this uh, application is for severance. Uh, in the corner, you can see 0.73 of a hectare um, on the right, uh, if you're standing on the road facing the property behind your left. Um, it's uh, set up similar to the other parcels that are to the right of it, uh, on this, uh, as you can see on the screen. Uh, this application has been approved by the County of Wellington Land Division Committee, and uh, the request here is for a variance for the frontage of the retained. Again, um, for parcels greater than four hectares, the minimum has to be 120 meters. In this case, the parcel is about 8.9, the retained will be 8.9 hectares, the, the, the retained will be have a frontage of 94 meters. The, there's plenty of room, of course, to build a house in that front area. Um, so it meets the, as in, in accordance with the um, County of Wellington planning staff, it meets the four tests. Um, I, you know, we've seen, seen the city of Guelph object to every single severance that's on Malpe Road or Forestell Road. Um, and um, they have brought several to OMB, including if I'm not mistaken, on this one here, the house uh, number 120 that was brought to OMB a number of years ago and the city of Guelph failed on their arguments. So um, they keep writing their arguments in to say it doesn't comply, whereas County Wellington has approved every single one of these severances on Malpe or Forestell. So um, I'd say in, in summary, the, 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 this, uh, the severance and the minor variances do, do conform with policy and uh, we have planning staff that supports that, uh, that comment. I'd be happy to answer any question or comments if there are any. Thank you. Lynn, are there any registrants who have requested to speak? No, Mr. Chair, I did not receive any requests. Uh, Courtney, would you please canvas uh, the uh, audience to see if there's any member of the public who wish to address the committee? If there's any attendee that would like to make a comment, if you could just use the raise your hand feature. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Okay, let's turn it over to the committee members. Uh, Dan, do you have any questions or comments on this uh, minor variance? No, I'm, I'm fine with it. Dennis? I'm fine as well. Steve? I'm good with this too as well. Paul? I'm good, thank you. Okay, and I'm fine as well. So let's uh, move the actual uh, wording. Application made by Devinder Singh Graywall and Sukhir Kaur Grinwal, 130 Multi Road West, Township of Pustinj, rear, lot, rear part lot 16, concession 7, Township of Pustinj, County of Wellington, a matter of section 45 of the Planning Act, as amended, and new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23 2018, as amended, and an application to minor birds to permit a reduced lot frontage of the retained parcel to be 94 meters instead of 120 meters as required. Okay, we go around the table, approve, deny, defer. We'll start with you, Dan. Approve. Dennis? Approve. Deep. Approved. Paul? Approved. Paul? I'm oh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, did Paul, and I approve it as well. And it's subject to a 20 day uh, appeal period. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, H. 
Minor applic uh, variance application D13, THO, Allen and Marjorie Thompson, 7 Sumac Street, part, uh, lot 191, plan 61M203, Township Postage, requesting relief of new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23-2018 as amended from site-specific provision number 86. The purpose and effect of the application is to provide relief from site specific site-specific special provision number 86 to permit an increased lot coverage to 38% instead of 35% as required. Okay, Lynn, would you please summarize the application, notification, submission requirements, outlining staff agency comments and recommendations, uh, as well as public comments of those who could not attend. Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met and the following comments were received from township departments and agencies. Uh, the township's building department stated that the building department has no building code concerns with the increased lot coverage proposed. Uh, they expect that the grading will likely remain as existing as the structures are comprised of pure type foundations and will have little impact on the site grading characteristics. The grading will be reviewed as part of the permit process to verify if any changes to grading are proposed. Source Water said that this property is not located in a vulnerable area. Uh, the application can be screened out and does not require a Section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. And the Township's Public Works Department stated that Public Works has performed a desktop review of the application and supporting documents and has no concerns at this time. Uh, thank you. Uh, Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant uh, join a panelist to present her application? Can you hear me? Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, fellow commissioners. Um, right now, uh, we have a small hey, uh, who, who am I speaking to, and what's oh, your address? Uh, Alan please? Thompson. And your and address? My wife, Mar Sorry? My wife, Marjorie. And what's your address? Uh, 7 Sumac Street. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, please go ahead, Alan. Uh, yes, right now, uh, we have a small landing at, at the back of our house with about six stairs and we have a small deck at the front um, and with stairs going down to it that uh, in the winter are uh, extremely slippery uh, get covered with snow and uh, I have artificial knees I'm 80 years old and uh, for safety we wish to cover it with a, a roof uh, a peaked roof at the front to uh, uh, so that the style of the house is maintained and uh, a flat roof at the uh, back um, and extending the, uh, the current deck at the front, which is just quite small, uh, three and a half feet um, uh, outwards, not not to width, but just outwards um, to uh, just give us more uh, area for sitting. And also, um, I have issues with um, having lots of uh, um, lesions on my head from the uh, sun and uh, give me a place to sit and enjoy the outside without uh, getting burned. Okay, thank you, Alan. Okay, Lynn, are there any registrants who have requested to speak? No, Mr. Chair, I did not receive any requests. Lynn, would you please canvas the audience to see if there's any individual uh, who would like to address the committee? If there's any attendees that would like to make a comment, if you could use the raise your hand feature now. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Great, thank you very much. Let's turn it over to the uh, members of the committee uh, uh, for questions or comments. Dan, do you have any questions or comments? No, I'm fine with this. Dennis? I'm fine as well. Steve? Um, do we have any comments from GRC on this? For conservation authority, uh, the GRCA advised that it is not within their jurisdiction. Okay, thank you. I'm good with this. Okay, and Paul, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, and I'm fine as well. So let's get into the actual uh, documentation. Application made by Allen and Marjorie Thompson, municipal address 7 Sumac Street, PV, Township Pustlunch, 
Lot 191, Registered Plan 61M203, Township of Pussons County of Wellington, a matter of Section 45 of the Planning Act as amended, and new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23-2018 as amended, an application for a minor variance to permit a, an increase in lot coverage from 34% to 38.86% in order to add covered decks to the property. Okay, and we'll go around the table. It's either uh, approve, deny, or defer. So we'll start with you, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approve. Deep. Approved. Paul. Approved. And I approve as well. All right. Let's move into the uh, last of the uh, minor variances. Six uh, I minor variance application D thirteen. Das HP, HP Polymers, 32 Curve Crescent, Lot 1, Part Lot 2, Plan 677, Township of Pussage, Request Relief of New Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 23 2018, as amended from Section 4.24.2b, Shipping Containers and Agricultural Industrial Zones. The purpose and effect of the application to provide relief from Section 4.24.2 to permit three shipping containers instead of one as required. And uh, I'll turn it over to Lynn. Lynn, would you please summarize the application, notification, submission requirements, outlining staff, agency comments and recommendations, as well as public comments of those could not attend. Notice of the application was given in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. Notice requirements for the application have been met and the following comments were received from township departments and agencies. The GRCA had no comments. Fire department states that they have no concerns with the application unless the storage containers will be storing flammable and or combustible liquids. If this is the case, the fire department will need to, will need more details concerning products being stored while quantities, controls, et cetera. Sourcewater said that the property is not located in a vulnerable area. Uh, therefore, the application can be screened out and does not require a Section 59 notice under the Clean Water Act. And Public Works has stated that they have performed a desktop review of the application and supporting documents and have no concerns at this time. Okay, uh, Lynn, there's a condition that uh, uh, staff have put on this. Uh, could you read that as well? So a draft condition was established that the applicant uh, obtained site plan approval from the township and addresses the location layout and screening of the shipping containers. Great, thank you very much. You're okay. Okay. Well, um, Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant join our panelists to present her application? He's muted. Courtney, Hello? you're muted, I'm sorry. Hello, this is Ryan Risto. Okay, great. Uh, Ryan, uh, would you please state your name and address for the record? My name is Ryan Ristein. I currently live at 803 dash, or sorry, this is for property 32 per Crescent. Okay. So Puss Lynch, Ontario, N0B2J0. Great, thank you. Would you please present your application? Okay, Let's, what can we see here? Yeah, staff have put up uh, a drawing of the site showing the proximal location of the containers. Okay, perfect. I just wanna make sure everyone can see what we're seeing here. Okay, so HP Polymers is a small polymer chemistry manufacturer uh, on Kerr Crescent. Uh, we're currently looking to have more uh, storage to we're, kind of we're losing you. Oh, hear me now. Could you start again, please? Absolutely. Uh, I'm operations manager for HP Polymers. We're a small polymer chemistry manufacturer on the Kerr Industrial Park Crescent. Uh, we are currently looking to have more shipping containers in order to accommodate more raw material storage. The more raw material storage being a direct requirement from a some recent growth the business has been going through. And of course, setting this up will allow us to maintain that and safely store other goods. Uh, the current uh, requirement 
is uh, point, uh, one container per 0.4 hectares of area, we are technically at 0.78. And um, so we are looking to actually have two more, which I, I suppose would require 1.2, as it's written, hectares, that is. Uh, however, the total area that we're looking to take up is 88 meters squared, which is um, quite a bit underneath the, the maximum requirement, the maximum requirement of 255 meters squared. I didn't actually catch the screening comment earlier. Okay, uh, is that it? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. So um, Lynn, are there any registrants who have requested to speak? Uh, no, we did not receive any requests. Uh, uh, Courtney, would you please uh, canvas the audience to see if there's any individual like to address the committee on this application? If there's any attendees uh, wishing to make a comment, if you can please use the raise your hand feature. Mr. Chair, I don't see any hands being raised. Great, great. Thank you, Courtney. So um, let's turn over the committee members and uh, we'll start with you, uh, Dan. Do you have any questions or comments? Uh, Ryan, I was wondering if you could uh, tell us what materials are being stored. The variety of dry goods, uh, empty drums, things of this nature. Um, we currently store them in trucks, but we can't really bring more trucks on the property. And just, so this would be a more tenable space during winter and stuff like that to store things like that. So no liquids that are gonna freeze and burst or anything like that? No. So no liquids period, so there's no containment required? No liquids, that is correct. There'd be no containment required. Okay, thanks. That's it for me. Thomas? I'm good then. Good. Deep, deep? I'm good, thank you. Paul? I'm good, thank you. And I'm good as well. So let's uh, read the documentation. Uh, HP Polymer is limited. Application made by HP Polymer is limited. Miss Blatter, 32 Kirk Crescent, Tasha Puslinch, legal description, lot one and part lot two, plan 677, Tasha Puslinch, County of Wellington, a matter section 45, Planning Act as amended, and new comprehensive zoning bylaw 23 2018 as amended, an application for minor variance to permit three shipping containers on a subject property instead of one is required. The three shipping containers to be located within the interior side yard instead of the rear yard as required. The three shipping containers on the subject property to be located within the interior side yard without visual screening from the street frontage or abutting lots as required. Condition that the applicant applied site plan approval from the township and addresses the location, layout, and screening of the shipping containers. Okay, so let's turn over to uh, committee members to uh, vote. It's either approved, deny, or deferred. Start with you, uh, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approved. Uh, Deep. Approved. Paul. 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 Approved. Thank you, Paul. Approved. Thank you, and I approve as well, and it's uh, subject to a 20-day appeal period. Mr. Chair, can I just confirm that you want the um, site plan approval condition in the decision? The condition says that the applicant updates site plan approval, yes. Thank you, I just need to confirm that. Good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, there are, um, let's see, do you have any other matters? Uh, we do not have any other matters. Uh, closed meeting, none. Um, our next meeting is Tuesday, December 7th, 2021, 7, at 7 p.m. And I get a mover and a second to, to adjourn at 8 uh, 28 p.m. So we'll get a mover and a second, please. We'll move it. Move by Deep, second by Dan. Let's go around the table. Dan? Approved. Dennis? Approved. Deep? Approved. Paul? Approved. And I approve as well. Okay, gentlemen, let's uh, move into the uh, planning advisory committee meeting. Um, 
I'd like to call the meeting to order. And uh, we have two minor variances before us today. And we'll do a roll call again. We'll start again with uh, Dan. Present. Dennis. Present. Uh, Deep Bassey. Present. And Paul Cedra. Present. And I, John Spools, am present. Um, Lynn, did we have any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, we do not. Okay, let's move into uh, the next item, approval of minutes of October 12, 2021. Do I have a mover, please, and a seconder? Move by uh, Dennis, second by Dan. Let's go around the table, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approve. Deep. Approved. Paul. Approved. And I approve as well. Okay, so let's go to seven. Approved. Seven, Okay, we go to SEMS application B87-21, also known as D10-BAU, Jane and George Bolt Hem, part lot 19, concession seven, municipally known as 4507, concession seven, Township Pusslinch, proposed severance is 0.68 hectares with 92 meter frontage, existing use for proposed rural residential use together with Eastman for shared entrance in favor of server parcel. Retained parcels 39.6 hectares with 216 meter frontage, existing proposed agriculture use for the existing dwelling, garden, shed, and barn. Okay, so um, let's um, uh, make the comment that the, this committee's mandate is only to provide comments to the county's land division committee when it considers this matter for approval. So, uh, uh, Courtney, would you please? have the owner or agent uh, join the panelists to present the application. Hello, Jeff Biesman. Thank you, Jeff. Would you please uh, present your application? Courtney, would you put up the site plan, please? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Committee members, uh, this uh, application is on Concession 7 Road. Um, we had a lot of research and discussion with the various agencies on this one because of the uniqueness of the area. Firstly, uh, Concession 7 Road is uh, uh, now under the jurisdiction or ownership of MTO as part of the overall um, I, I call it the Morriston Bypass, but basically the bypass and the rerouting of the uh, highway to eventually connect to the Hanlon. The connection is, uh, and, and the connections to Kenny Road 34. So Concession 7 Road was widened significantly, which you can see on that sketch there, and, um, so, and, and is under control of MTO. MTO uh, has informed me that they will not allow a new entrance until at least the project is done or constructed or a long ways along the way. Well, um, but they will allow uh, a, sh a shared driveway. So they will allow um, us to use um, the existing driveway for two different parcels, shall I say. So in this case, we have uh, the parents want to create the severance for their daughter and, and her partner. And uh, so the idea here is that we have a severance that's in the right and the left corner, sorry, and that we have an easement to uh, go along the existing driveway and then hook on a left hand turn, if you will, to lead to the uh, proposed severance. Maybe eventually someday that we will have a, we'll be able to have a driveway that goes directly to Concession 7 Road, but that's not possible at this time. Um, we looked at a variety of things on this, but we felt this was the best way to do it. You'll notice that the, that the easement is set back a bit because the front part uh, in that corner there is a little bit of a floodplain in that corner. And um, uh, we wanted to have that easement uh, really stay out of that easement. I'd be happy to answer any questions or comments. It's a, little, it's a unique one for sure and uh, happy to entertain your questions. Okay. Uh, Lynn, were there any agency comments received? No, Mr. Chair, we did not receive any agency comments. We did receive comments from the Township's Fire Department. 
Okay. And they just said that they have no concerns regarding the application, providing the access route to the property. It's able to accommodate the weight and size of the fire trucks. And they said to please ask the applicants to be mindful about tree planting close to the access route as they require a clear height above the route of at least five meters um, above the road surface. Okay, Lynn, were there any uh, written comments received from the public? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, there were not. Okay, thank you. So if there are any attendees watching this hearing who would like to give comments or questions uh, uh, regarding this item, would you please uh, 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 be aware that they uh, are to be heard at the Land Division Committee. As I mentioned earlier, we are strictly to provide our comments that are going to the Land Division Committee uh, when they uh, review and uh, deliberate on this matter. Okay, now let's turn it over to the committee members. Have have any questions or comments of the uh, agent or the county planner on uh, this item? So we'll start with you, uh, Dan. I guess the only comment I wanted to make is when I went out and visited this property, I, I kind of thought the whole area or complete area there seemed to be very low. And, and I agree the one part is floodplain, I guess, but the, the, the entire area seemed low to me to be building on and, and without knowing exactly what the MTO is going to be doing with concession seven is raising it, lowering it, widening it. I, I don't know how water management will come into play in the future. Just a comment on my part. Okay, thank you. Dennis? I agree with Dan's comments there too, but um, is there anything that can be done as far as down the road, whenever there is an opportunity to put the entrance way to, to uh, concession seven, that it, the easement gets dropped or like, or is this something we may end up living with? I guess that's a concern I have. Jeff? Uh, thanks. Uh, it's a good thought. I didn't think about how to, how to uh, get rid of the easement later. Um, I guess I'm, I'm maybe I'm not the optimistic person to sort of say, yeah, we're going to have uh, that road built in the next two years. It, I think it's going to be a long time. Um, so I, I don't see a mechanism to get rid of it other than if I live there, I for sure would want, would prefer to have access directly to the road. So I think it'd be intuitive of the future owner to create their own driveway when they can. Um, that's just, that's my logic on it more than anything else. Um, in the meantime, whether, I guess if I, if I look, look at it and consider it, that easement will be there, um, whether it's there for five years, 10 years or 50 years, that's, I think that that's okay. That's how it's gonna work. If I think about it, I know that I handled a severance on um, Highway 6, just south of Morriston and, and there were two parcels created and they had their driveways are right beside each other. You may be familiar with those two properties. The houses were built in the last five years or so, maybe a little bit more, um, but they have a mutual right of way. They share one entrance as well. And, and it works just fine for that. Now that one's a little bit different of course, but I think, uh, I think it'll work just fine. Uh, this easement, I, I hope that answered your question. Some comments towards it anyways. Thanks. Deep. No, I'm good. Actually, I agree with both of both the comments that we heard so far. Okay, and uh, Paul. Yeah, my uh, my internet's a bit slow, but um, my comment is around the easement. I guess just to clarify, my comment is that uh, who would be responsible for snow removal, maintenance, um, because these, you know, the two homes could get sold and you'd have both new neighbors uh, at some point, and then um, there could be miscommunication on certain aspects of that easement. So um, that's my only comment, just from actually my own experience as well. Just So that's, uh, that's what I've come to see on this one. Okay. Um... Before I make my comments, I'd like uh, the county to comment on with respect to those employment lands directly to the north there. Uh, could you please comment on that? Sure, so through the chair, uh, the lands directly to the north are designated as a rural employment in the county OP. So they are zoned as FD3, I believe. So uh, the intent is that it would be an industrial type use at some point in the future. 
Um, and then that property would have to go through a rezoning amendment. So when they when they go through the zoning amendment, they look at the sensitive uses in the area. It could be through the noise report, traffic report, that sort of thing. But uh, but yeah, a new a new lot in this area would factor into a future application. But uh, but there are no active applications on that property. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, first of all, I, I um, share the comments on easements. I really am concerned about having an easement. Uh, uh, Paul raises a good a valid points that uh, owners can change. Um, and we've seen that in the past. Somebody buys something for who, uh, somebody who would intend as family member, and that's changed quite rapidly. Uh, and also with respect to uh, shared uh, driveways. Again, that's the same issue as an easement. Uh, uh, you get into disputes and I don't think the township wants to get into uh, uh, disputes that are unnecessarily created. So th that's my concern. Um, I guess I'd um, like to go around the table uh, to see what comments we want to make. My pre personal preference is that uh, uh, because of the easement and the shared driveway and the close proximity to the future employment lands that uh, I have difficulty supporting this uh, severance and as well as the drainage uh, comment made by Dan. So let's go around the table, Dan. Yeah, I have trouble supporting this one as well for, for all those reasons. Okay. Dennis? I agree with that. Okay, uh, Deep? Yep, I agree. Paul? I agree. Okay, so I'm gonna suggest that uh, uh, the wording we say is that uh, uh, the committee has difficulty supporting this application because of uh, concerns with shared driveway, easement, uh, drainage, and future development lands to the north. So do I, can I get a mover for that comment? Deep? I'll move Second. it. Second. Thank you. Dennis. Okay, let's go all around the table. Uh, Dan. In favor. Dennis. In favor. Deep. In favor. Paul. In favor. I'm in favor as well. Okay, thank you very much for that one. So let's go to the next one. Seventh application B94-21, D10-GIL, Scott and Herminia. Gillingham, Part Law 20, Concession 4, Municipal known as 6981 Forest Dale Road, Township Pussland, for full severance is 60 meter frontage by 75 meters or 0 0.5, 4, 4 5 hectares, vacant land for full residential use. Retained parcel is 6.7 hectares with 95 meter frontage, existing and proposed agriculture and residential use with existing dwelling and sheds. Okay, so. Um, uh, again, uh, our, our mandate uh, for anybody watching is to only provide comments to the county's land division committee when it considers this matter for approval. So, uh, 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 Courtney, would you please have the owner applicant uh, join the panelists to present the application? Jeff Biesman here. Um, uh, yeah, Jeff, present... please go ahead. Sure. This property is on Forestell Road. Uh, City of Guelph is located immediately across the road to the north. Um, this property is a little odd shaped in, in with it. it. It's existing. It's a little bit of an L-shaped parcel, but the idea is to have a severance in the top left-hand corner there. Um, we reviewed all the criteria of the official plan and it meets all the criteria in terms of uh, safe entrance, um, Decent configuration, the five-year rule, secondary ag. We also evaluated the MBS requirements uh, relative to the barns in the area. Uh, one of these barns is actually one that we saw earlier tonight. Uh, the, um, the Weaver barn is the one down at the bottom on the left there. So um, I, it's a pretty good straightforward severance. We are counting on a road widening to the, uh, in the front um for the city of guelph um as that's what they've requested on forest hill road for numerous severance that we've managed to the west of this property if there's any questions or comments i'd be happy to answer them okay thank you uh lynn were there any agency or public comments received that's so please read them 
the only comments that we received uh, from our public works department, and they've determined that an entrance approval must come from the city of Guelph as they are the road authority. Okay. And uh, fire department has no concerns. Okay, thank you. So again, for any attendees watching um, this uh, this thing, uh, this uh, this part of the discussion, uh, uh, please, if you have comments, please uh, make them to the uh, land division committee. So let's go around the table for the uh, committee members to ask questions or provide comments. Um, we will summarize as uh, our comments to the land division committee. So we'll start with you, Dan. Um, I think I've got no questions. I think I'm okay with this one. Okay, Dennis. Yeah, I'm okay as well. Okay, uh, Deep. I'm okay as well. And uh, I'm okay as well. Um, so um, basically, my, my suggestion is uh, that the committee supports this application. It would be our comments. So I um, may get a mover and a seconder that uh, uh, the committee the committee supports this application. I can move it. Okay, so we'll get uh, Dennis to move it and second by Dan, uh, Dan. Let's go around the table, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approve. Deep. Approved. Paul. Approved. And I approve as well. Okay, uh, other matters? Um, Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Chair, can I interrupt for just one moment, please? Yes, please do. Uh, so for the conditions, do you want our standard conditions and also that the owner receives zoning compliance for the retained parcel? I'm sorry, we missed that. Yes. Uh, the, okay. Uh, yeah, we missed that. Sorry, we'll have to redo that again because there, we'll need a zoning compliance for a retained parcel. The um, my understanding is that uh, the 99 meters to retaining will has to be 120, so there will need a minor variance for that. So I'll amend that to say we support that, uh, and uh, the committee notes that the, there is a, um, a minor variance required for the retained parcel. Okay, so we'll start that again. So Dennis, you okay with the revisions? Yes. Okay, and Dan, you okay with the uh, second? Okay, let's go on the table again. Dan? Approved. Dennis? Approved. Deep? Approved. And Paul? Approved. Okay, and I approve as well. Okay, and move on to the next item. Other matters, none. Closed meeting, none. And uh, uh, next meeting is Tuesday, December 7, 2021 at 7 p.m. And uh, we adjourn this at 8.47 p.m. Do I have a mover to adjourn? Okay, uh, Dan, second by Dennis. Let's go around the table, Dan. Approve. Dennis. Approve. Deep. Approve. Okay, Paul. Approve. And I approve as well. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen, and have a good evening. You too. Thank you as well. Take care. Good night. Bye. Good night.